is a review paper. The motivation for me to write this paper goes back a few years. I wrote a book called Dumping Iron. Uh, this was about five years ago, and I wrote it for a lay audience. And I was trying to sum up some of the research relating to iron health and disease. Ultimately, this uh, research and my interest in this topic goes back to the uh, writings of the late Jerome Sullivan, MD, who first came up with the iron hypothesis of heart disease. This was very fascinating to me and I thought that no one was really taking a deeper look at it and so uh, I did and I ended up writing this book, Dumping Iron. Um, iron it has been implicated in many chronic diseases, not just atherosclerosis, but cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, um, many other diseases. My motivation for writing the article, Iron, an Underrated Factor in Aging, was because I believe this is a very overlooked area in aging research. Um, as I mentioned, Iron is implicated in many uh, diseases and chronic health conditions, but its relation to aging itself, uh, I believe, has been overlooked. There has been quite a bit of research in the last few years pointing in this direction that iron is very important in aging. So what I wanted to do was to try to sum up some of this research and point readers of aging and other scientists in this area, hopefully, to this research and to point out its importance. Um, I don't want to just uh, recapitulate the, the whole paper here. Uh, you can read it for yourself in uh, probably 10 minutes. Um, but um, let me just highlight a few points one is uh, the relation of iron to the mammalian or mechanistic target of rapamycin. <clears throat> mTOR, as it's called, has been a very important uh, focus of research in aging. Uh, it has been shown that inhibition of mTOR by the drug rapamycin or by other means can extend lifespan in experimental animals. Well, it so happens that iron is involved. Iron is necessary for activation of mTOR. Uh, chelators of iron will inhibit mTOR activation. Um, adding iron w to, uh, to the media of an organism will promote mTOR activation. So it certainly seems that iron is important in mTOR activation and that using <coughs> iron uh, whether iron chelation or, or uh, lowering iron by other means um, could help extend lifespan through its inhibition of the activation of mTOR. There are some other uh, modalities of life extension in which iron appears to be very important. Calorie restriction, for example. This is the oldest and most robust known lifespan extension um, intervention that's known. This has been known for about 80 years in animals. And um, restricting, restricting the food of animals does indeed extend their lifespan quite a bit. Uh, it also, th there have been many, many, many studies trying to understand why calorie restrict restriction extends the lifespan of animals. Um, some of these have uh, uh, pointed to insulin, to uh, adiposity, um, to hormesis, to autophagy. Many other mechanisms have been proposed. Um, it's possible, certainly possible, that uh, many of these have to do with the uh, calorie restriction effects altogether. In any case, iron is also involved. Calorie restriction prevents accumulation of iron with aging. Um, so this could be one other important mechanism by which calorie restriction extends lifespan. If so, it follows that <clears throat> restricting iron could uh, slow or 
con uh, conceivably reverse aging. There have been other uh, other lifespan extending interventions of interest that also uh, involve iron, for example, various polyphenols and drugs. I discuss these uh, quite a bit in the article that have iron the that have iron chelating capabilities. Iron may very well be important in the mechanisms of action of these drugs and natural products that extend lifespan. Another um, much more recent intervention that's of great interest um, is therapeutic plasma exchange or plasma dilution. Um, this has been found, uh, th these interventions have come out of experiments in heterochronic parabiosis. In heterochronic parabiosis, it's been found that young blood will um, at least partially rejuvenate an older animal. Um, now the question is, why does this happen? It, and it certainly seems that dilution of the older animal's plasma has something to do with it, since uh, old, uh, blood from an old animal actually harms a younger animal. So it's not, it doesn't seem to be strictly speaking that the young blood is helping, helping the older animal, although there's certainly a uh, possibility of that being involved. Um, other evidence that Dilution of plasma is the major factor in, in, uh, in this phenomenon is actually doing plasma dilution. So this has been done recently in the last uh, just couple of years where in animals um, much of the plasma has been removed, 50% of the plasma has been removed and it's been replaced by uh, a saline and albumin um, mixture. And this has uh, been shown to be rejuvenating. So, um, and, and this has been shown um, in, in, uh, in vitro as well, in, which, uh, in where muscle cells can be rejuvenated by, uh, by using this diluted, by using plasma from humans that have undergone uh, therapeutic plasma exchange. In therapeutic uh, plasma exchange, this is very similar to plasma dilution, which in which uh, patients with certain illnesses um, have an apheresis procedure and their plasma is diluted. So this diluted plasma um, is rejuvenating to uh, muscle cells of rodents. So the question is, what is going on here exactly? Um, one of my suggestions is that iron is being removed. There are, are um, a number of pieces of evidence of this. And um, so I think this is important. People are now looking at therapeutic plasma exchange as, uh, as a uh, life extending modality. So um, in some, I believe that uh, iron is a very, very um, overlooked underrated factor in aging and that more people ought to be taking a look at it. Scientists should be investigating it further. And that is exactly why I wrote that paper.